Good day everyone and we are back again together uh, just looking at question four this time around of the November 2021 uh, question paper all right uh, um, and this is from the DBE so for those of you who are uh, still preparing for the IEB exam um, obviously this will help quite a lot in uh, just making sure that you prepare for that exam okay so we're looking at uh, question four and uh, if you haven't subscribed please just make sure you are part of the family and for those of you obviously who you know uh, um, need assistance with either mathematics or physical science you're more than welcome to just uh, send us an email and our information uh, is uh, or rather email address is info at mlungisinkosi.co.za now let's get into the question all right so they give us compound p which is used as a starting reactant in each of the two reactions as shown in the flow diagram uh, below so you can see there we've got a you know we've we've, we've got a hello alkane okay which is taken through a, a, you know a, a reaction there with dilute sodium hydroxide and again in reaction two with uh, with sodium hydroxide there okay and uh, they say to us uh, name the type of reaction represented by uh, reaction one and um, if you don't you find this confusing obviously it means you haven't watched our uh, you know our uh, playlist on you know organic chemistry um, this is explained quite nicely all of these reactions are explained I'm still yet to do another uh, you know video where I explain the reaction conditions there um, so that's still coming up okay so they say name the type of reaction represented by one okay so remember in this case we are taking um, you know um, you know that bromide there would actually be substituted by that uh, hydroxide ion to form actually the you know that alcohol there so this should be a substitution reaction okay so this is a substitution reaction right and then 4.1.2 okay um, so they say is 2 methyl butane one all a primary secondary or tertiary alcohol now if you keep in mind that um, so uh, this would be two uh, uh, methyl uh, butane one all uh, maybe let me just draw the structure for you so that you can see what it looks like okay so we know that it would have uh, butane okay it's got at carbon number one it's got that OH let me just draw it onto this side okay and then at carbon number two uh, it's got a methyl there uh, so there's a, a, a methyl group at carbon number two okay now uh, if you look at that there uh, this would be a, a a primary alcohol right now if I if you look at this the carbon that has the functional group is linked to only one other carbon so remember for it to be a secondary alcohol you have to have the carbon that has the functional group you know um, somewhere in the middle or, or you know uh, any carbon other than the ones at the end why because then it would be linked to two other carbons next to it okay and for a tertiary alcohol obviously it would have three and it would be linked to three other carbons so in this case um, definitely this should still be a primary alcohol okay um yeah so and and i know um obviously the examiner wanted to check and put a trap there uh, because uh, you know when people see that there's a side chain then they immediately think that this it's going to be a secondary alcohol uh, but actually it is a primary alcohol right so um yeah so they said give a reason for the answer all right and uh, we said the carbon that um, that has the functional group is linked to only one other carbon or you can say that the carbon that has the functional group uh, is at the end or the beginning of the of of the uh, of the main parent chain okay right I, I like the first one better 
okay so uh, 4.1.3 okay they say write down the structural formula of compound P okay now obviously that it turned into something like this okay can only mean that the bromide obviously was sitting there so it would be exactly the same as what we've drawn there um, remember that reaction wouldn't change its structure it would only replace uh, you know that um, you know that bromide in uh, and and with a, a hydroxide ion so in that case it would look something like this okay so there it is there of course you're going to put all your hydrogen bonds there um, they did say structural formula so we must see all the bonds uh, so uh, uh, I almost forgot at carbon number two there is a methyl group there uh, so there it is at carbon number two and in fact I'm taking uh, you know I'm counting from right to left and nothing wrong if you put the bromide there and the methyl group obviously would be at this as carbon number two all right so this is what our compound would look like and of course you can put the bromide anywhere here um, it, it really wouldn't matter okay right and so that is what it would look like okay they say name the type of reaction represented by two so again here what we are doing is that uh, this would be an elimination reaction uh, so when you take concentrated sodium hydroxide and please if you don't understand this i've got a full video on this okay where i explain it if we take concentrated sodium hydroxide this becomes an elimination reaction so we end up with an alkene uh, as a product okay so for 4.1.4 okay the type of reaction represented by two that would definitely be an elimination reaction okay so that would be our elimination reaction okay and um, they say to which homologous series does compound Q belong remember I said it's an elimination reaction so what would you, what you would do is that you would lim eliminate a hydrogen as well as a, a, a you know a bromide the bromide and the hydrogen on the uh, the one next to it in this case so um, you would end up with an alkene so uh, 4.1.5 uh, that would be an alkene okay so you'd end up with an alkene as your product right now the next question they say name the type of reaction represented by three okay so now you've got an alkene and you once again you are reacting it with hydrogen bromide um, in fact you're going to end up with almost the same thing and I say almost because they said high uh, uh, major product okay you know this is where now you would uh, apply Makonikov's rule okay um, uh, because now the hydrogen would go to the carbon that has the most number of hydrogens okay if you don't know once again what I'm talking about please just watch our video uh, on um, organic uh, chemistry all right um, just go and look for that playlist and it will help you right so uh, 4.1.6 um, uh, yeah we, we did say that's going to be so that's going to be an addition reaction okay because we're going to break those double bonds there from the alkene and it's going to be an addition reaction okay right and finally they say nay uh, write down the IUPAC name of compound R okay so what would happen with compound R remember you would take okay uh, first of all let me just uh, try and uh, squeeze in some space here all right so you would actually have um, an alkene we would have eliminated one bromide there and uh, one hydrogen so you end up with a double bond okay now uh, what happens is that when you end up with that double bond okay I'm not going to draw it I'm just going to explain it so when you break that double bond uh, in that case you'll end up now uh, with and and remember they wrote a major product there you can end up with the same thing 
but for the major product remember that the hydrogen now remember you are reacting it with hydrogen and bromide so uh, the bromide or rather the hydrogen would go to the carbon that has the most number of hydrogen so if you look at these two um, uh, you know hydrogens you'd see that uh, uh, this one has got one hydrogen and this one has got two hydrogens so it means that the hydrogen that you get from hydrogen bromide would go to this carbon here meaning that the bromide would actually go to uh, carbon number two so what you end up with as your major product so for 4.1.7 what you actually end up with is two uh, bromo okay uh, that's going to be two methyl so I want you to think about it. Oh, this guy wants to um, quit on us. Okay, let's just. Uh, okay, so that's 2-methyl. Okay, so this would be 2-methyl. And in this case, of course, uh, the parent chain, it would be butane. So in this case, that would be butane as our last, um, uh, the last thing that we add there. Okay, so this would be 2-bromo, two 2-methyl, two butane, and that is what we would end up with. All right, so um, that is how that cookie crumbles, all right? And hopefully you were able to get all of those marks. Um, all right, I still think that there's another part that we still need to do, okay? All right, so uh, we continue with the next part of this question. Uh, which is 4.2. Now they say uh, 1,2 dibromopropane can be prepared from but2-in uh, by a three-step uh, process as shown in the flow diagram below. Now obviously you had to be creative here um, because uh, first of all uh, let's have a look at what uh, we are looking at. You're looking at but2-in which obviously has four carbons in its parent chain but want to change it to something that has three carbons. So that does tell me that at some point I must actually, you know, break this guy down into another compound, okay? Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first change this. And by the way, this is propane. So I'm going to change this into an alkane, all right? So in step one, let me react... Uh, you know, uh, butane with hydrogen um, to form an alkane there, okay? And then what we can then do in step two is that we can, uh, it can be cracking there, all right? Uh, so we can form, uh, you know, an alkene, um, you know, propane, uh, a propene rather than something else, okay? And then we can react that of obviously with, uh, you know, with, um, uh, with bromine, okay? Right, so let, let's, 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 yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Now they say used condensed structural formulae, okay, to write down a balanced equation for step one, indicate the reaction conditions on the arrow, okay? So what we can do is we can take, um, remember they said structural formulae, uh, oh no, they said condensed structural formulae. Right, so uh, butene would be uh, CH3, CH2, um, that would be CH and CH2, right? Okay, so we're answering 4.2.1. Okay, just keep that in mind. And then what we're going to do is we're going to react it with hydrogen. Okay, now... Uh, please always keep in mind this happens in the uh, with platinum as a catalyst or you can even use palladium uh, or even nickel as a catalyst okay um, um, obviously uh, this needs to be in a nonpolar uh, solvent okay um, so in this case we are now going to react this and obviously it's going to be an addition reaction so what we get on the other hand on the other side at CH3, CH2, CH2, okay, as, as well as CH3. So we get an alkane, all right? 
Now, what we're going to do, okay, so we've answered that question in a sense, okay, the first question. And then they say write down the type of reaction uh, in step two. Okay, so step two should be, uh, in my opinion, that should be now uh, the, a process called cracking. Okay, so we are breaking down that compound and making it into a smaller compound, uh, smaller, more usable compounds in this case. Um, so it would be cracking. And then um, 4.2.3, they say write down the IUPAC name of compound B. Okay, so what I'm going to do, obviously after cracking, uh, you know, the one that we're going to use here should have three carbons, right? So in this case, what would you have there, uh, uh, sorry, 4.2.3, what should you have after breaking it down, okay? You should have propene as your, um, uh, you know, uh, and, and by the way, uh, there's no reason for you to say uh, prop one in. Um, you can do so, but I mean, obviously you can only have it at carbon number one. So that would be prop one in if you really want to be pedantic about it. Okay, uh, so that would be prop one in. Right, and then 4.2.4. Uh, um, so now that we've formed prop one in, okay, uh, now we can react it with bromine, right? And you know that obviously when we break that double bond, it would now form uh, obviously uh, both the bromine, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, ions rather, would actually attach themselves to each carbon atom, right? Um, so 4.2.4. They say use a condensed structural formula and write down a balanced equation for step three. Okay, so for step three, uh, I would take prop one in. Um, so they said condensed as well. So this would be CH3, CH, and CH2. Okay, uh, that tells me that this there must be a double bond here because they don't have the maximum number of carbons. Remember, for it to be maximum for any carbon that's in between, okay, it must be two hydrogens, uh, and the carbons at the end, it must be three hydrogens, right? So in this case, this tells you there's something missing there um, if you've got two and one respectively. So then we react it with bromine, okay? And obviously what's going to happen there, we're going to have CH3, CH with a bromide there, okay, uh, in fact we can even show it there, uh, and then CH2 also with a bromide atom there, okay, right, so we could have actually uh, shown it there, uh, that it's attached, okay, right, and uh, essentially that is what we have. Um, just something to keep in mind is that uh, remember that uh, alkenes react quite spontaneously uh, with uh, halogens, okay? Uh, so in that case, uh, you wouldn't really need much to get that reaction to take place. All right, and uh, essentially, uh, you would have gotten yourself 21 marks out of that. Uh, and I hope that it's been really, really helpful as we are going through this section. All right, and please uh, continue to invite more people and tell them about, yay, this plug called Physical Science. Uh, yeah, the channel uh, um, is Mlungi Singosi. Please just uh, continue to tell even more. Uh, those who are going to into metric uh, and those who obviously want to improve their results can really benefit from this channel. All right, and I'll see you guys again next time. Shop, shop.